298, which means we are nearly, at, I mean, it's just a milestone moment for us. Episode 300 is coming up. Uh, and Vivi, who is here in the background, is working on um, a bit of a special asset. Asset, that's such a boring word, isn't it? Um, a, a thing that will be useful for you when we get to episode 300, um, because we have created loads of different materials across all those different episodes. So that is coming. Uh, stay and see what is coming uh, in a couple of weeks time. But yes, yeah, this week was all about how to create career karma. And the first thing that Sarah and I talked about was the benefits of creating career karma. So this is really all about how you give to people um, and how you take a giving mindset. So Sarah called it on the podcast, giving without keeping score. So it's not um, a transactional way of sort of building relationships. It's not me thinking, well, because I want to get this out of Sarah, what can I give to her that makes her want to do it? It's not, it's not a transactional thing. It's just approaching the relationships that you build from a, from a giving first perspective. And there are three really big benefits of taking this approach to how you build relationships. The first is that actually when you've kind of got sort of two people um, and it can be more, it doesn't have to be one to one, but let's just think of it that way. So if I'm giving to Sarah as an example, um, what happens over the long term is I actually get more back. So whilst it's not a, whilst you don't want to do it from a transactional perspective, what is useful to know is that when you take a giving first approach what happens is you create uh, like reciprocity in the relationship people are more likely to want to help you they see you as a giving person and as human beings we want we want to give back I had this just yesterday so Sarah and I would did this event yesterday and we had loads of people that helped us and gave their time and I messaged someone last night and I was sort of like desperate to give back because I recognized they'd spent an hour with us and they were hugely helpful and their help had sparked lots of conversations so now I feel I feel like I really want to help that person back I'm like help me to help you um and so hopefully hopefully they will take my offer of help but that's what I mean it's their help has, has made me want to reciprocate in some quite specific ways. So that's the first benefit. You ultimately get more back over the, over the long term. And the second thing is when you have a giving first approach, it's actually sort of better for our brain. There's something called the helper's high that is created when, when we help people. So, for example, Sarah and I talk about Pod Plus, um, that is one of our favourite moments in the week because, like, we get to help you with things that we know we get to try things out and it's very positive and and we do it because we want to do it you know it, it, and and every week we come away from it and we're like oh it's so nice to see those people and people send us messages afterwards and giving creates a help as high it's better for your brain the other thing i think is you if you ever feel awkward about building a community around your career starting with what you've got to give it's just an easier place because people like helping people it makes your brain feel better and that's kind of a, a nice thing for all of us so I think it makes relationships less awkward when you start with how how you can help them and the third thing is that in the context of our squiggly career where there's you know lots of change going on and that might be within your company it might be you moving around in different organizations your relationships are the things that take with you as you as you grow so if I think about the relationships that I have built um with people from taking a giving first approach that has grown with me as I have grown in my career it's like even though you have lots of change your relationships can be a really really important constant in that so three really really big benefits of um taking a giving first approach to how we how we build relationships and the reason we call it career karma is because about five years ago I think when Sarah and I were doing this massive project with Money Supermarket um we were talking we were doing like the networking part of this this program that we were doing and there's a lady called Lisa in the audience and I always feel I have to give her credit because we were talking about it and we used to call it like the give get principle or something like that and she was like oh it's like calling it um career karma and we were like that's just a nicer way of, <laughs> nicer way of calling it that so yeah it is her term and it's exactly like that you're sort of cultivating this career karma by taking a giving first approach um, we share quite a few different ideas. We go through five different ideas. Um, just a couple of recap on just two of them. One it was the five minute favour. This is borrowed from Adam Grant, who's also done a lot of work in this area. Um, and I thought this is a really nice five minute favour that we'd had recently. It's also a little secret insight into what fellow authors do for each other. So um, we've spoken before about somebody called Ian Sanders, who um, 
His, he's got several books, actually. His most recent book is 365 Ways to Have a Good Day. Um, and he he WhatsApp me to say, like, amazing news on Richard Branson and UKQ, because Richard Branson gave us this amazing quote for UKQ. And he said, and look, look what I've seen, your book in foils next to Richard. It's fate. And then I said to him, did, did you move it? <laughs> and he said, yeah, I did actually. Well, you see, I thought you deserved to be on the top shelf. And so that was his sort of five minute favour was he's basically going around lots of bookshops, putting our book on the on the shelf next to Richard, which I thought was lovely. And it's actually what quite a lot of authors will do for each other. They sort of book spot for each other when they're in um, when they're in a um, bookshop, a book spot in a bookshop and they move they move people's books to the front. So it's a very it's a, for me, that was an example of someone who was doing a five minute favour for us, which I thought was which was lovely so there are, you can do five minute favors in all kinds of ways you don't have to have books you can you know write people recommendations uh you can you know give people feedback feedback's a great a great one um to do and um, one of the other things we talk about as well on the podcast was the three e's i always find this really useful quite a practical way of thinking about what you've get, got to give so e number one could be for expertise so something that you've got um, knowledge of. So um, Tiff that's here that we were just saying hello to that we've not seen for a while. Um, Tiff does a lot on public speaking and sort of gravitas and um, has an expertise in that area. And she can offer that up to people to help them kind of improve maybe how they're presenting. Tiff has actually offered that up to us before um, as an example. Um, you can also uh, share your experience. So, uh, for example, this, this morning over WhatsApp, my WhatsApp is very busy, um, somebody asked uh, me for help because they're thinking about writing a book. And I left them a very long voice note uh, with sort of our experience of, of doing that and finding publishers. So that's something that I've got to give is the fact that Sarah and I have, have, have had that experience and other people might benefit from it. And the third one is energy. Um, now, this could be as simple as time. You, it could be as simple as I've got a couple of hours. I know you're working on this. Let, let me know how I can help. The energy could just be the time that you offer to somebody or it could be your passion. Like I see you're doing that. It's something I'm also passionate about. Like, how, how can I help? But for me, these are sort of a good filter. If you're ever struggling with what what have I got to give, which can sometimes hide a confidence gremlin. Like if you're doubting what you've got to give, maybe there's a little confidence gremlin under the surface. But I would reflect on what do you know, expertise, what have you ex what have you kind of uh, been through your experience and like what are you passionate about? And that can often prompt some things that you've got to give. So um, that was everything that I was going to say. Have I missed anything in chat, Sarah, before I hand over to you? No, you're all good. People are even anticipating where we're going to go next, which is Ooh, perfect. amazing. Here we go. So what we thought we would do for the second half of Pod Plus today is some live career karma. So we thought we'd actually have a go at, at just practicing a bit of this and just see, see what happens, see what works. I have tried to give us a bit of a framework to get started, to ease us all in on this Thursday morning, rather than kind of it being too intense too soon. Um, as I say, especially because I feel like as an amazing IFT this morning, we're still probably slightly waking up, let's be honest. <laughs> so first thing I thought we could all do for each other one of the E's that Helen just talked about was experience or sometimes experiences um, and the expertise that we've got let me know in chat one bit of useful career advice that you would share with everybody else here so one bit of useful career advice that you would share with everyone else here could be your own advice could be advice someone else has given you that's really stuck with you I always say um, never live the same year twice. Um, Helen's favourite is run your own race. So let's try a bit of career karma. So we're kind of giving, we're giving our advice, our experience. Define what success means to you, Chi Chi. Great one. Never assume. Love that. What else? Always know. I love that, Steve. Steve's always very wise. Always <laughs> like, know he, he is wise. He's just, Steve is wise. Uh, know what you'd do if you gonna, if you lost your job tomorrow. Takes a load of pressure off you. Yeah. Uh, common sense isn't always common. Oh, I like that. That's very quotable, that is. Um, every day is an interview for the job you already have, Victoria. Uh, I'm trying to work out whether that sounds intense or... <laughs> scary um be curious don't be afraid to pivot and reinvent yourself great tiffany saying variety is the spice of life starting is the hardest um part love that uh i'm very true i think um start over again with a smile keep asking for feedback lorraine really good one um get to know people first be patient 
turn negatives into positives. Oh, so useful. Comparison is the thief of joy. Yeah, Amy. I think there's actually also quite a lot of evidence to prove that is definitely true. But I really like Georgie's as well. If someone doesn't get back to you, it's almost always not you. Yeah, if there's yeah. anything here that I've not got back to, it is not you, it's me. I'm yeah. just going through my inbox just in case. <laughs> Great. So that's already a bit of career karma for all of us. You've all just given something there. Um, and hey, we've probably all done a bit of gaining as well, but it's all about you you kind of giving. Let's try a different way of doing it. Let's do a bit of curiosity karma now. What's something that you've read, watched or listened to recently that you'd recommend to everybody here? Something you've read, <clears throat> excuse me, something you've read, watched or listened to that you would recommend to uh, people in Pod Plus could be an article, could be a book, could be something podcast you've listened to, documentary that you've watched, uh, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Ah, oh, Petra, you've read you, coach you. Thank you. Uh, Thinking Fast and Slow, that's good going. Uh, who is it who'd read that? Well done for reading that. That's not, not an easy read. Oh, How to Make the Boat Go Faster, Molly. Yeah, good book. I like, I like that book um finding my voice nicole not come across that one sounds good though um blink yeah classic classic gladwell blink um lucy's been watching some school of life videos they're good school of life videos i like those atomic habits continues to be a favorite everybody always loves that one. Ah, oh, felicity you've read uh, productivity ninja from graham he's been on our podcast Ah, oh, claire midnight library is really good isn't it um always really enjoy uh, his work TED Talks, great on finding a sponsor. I've not seen that one. Carla Harris. I've had Carla Harris. Good to check, check that one out. Reset, Atomic Habits as well. Quiet by Susan Kane, classic. Man's Search for Meaning, another classic. Uh, some great recommendations here. All the Money in the World, Laura Vanderkamp, who also wrote that breakfast book about getting up early it's not she does it's not about getting up early it's about how many hours you have in the week and how you optimize your time it's just you don't like getting up early so I think you yeah but isn't the book called bias. what's the book called it's like no oh, I can't remember it's about time but it's not just about getting up early it's about I know. hours that, I think it might be called though what successful people do before breakfast is it I'm yes <laughs> great okay. if you've made up a book title now because of your annoyance of early mornings <laughs> uh what else have we got factfulness oh, i've not read that but that is one of the ones uh, that is on my to read list i have got that vivi uh, you may uh, be right <laughs> what i learned from rejection that sounds like a really good one as well factfulness was brilliant oh okay i should put that to the top of my list love quiet and quiet power great so again one of the things I think the fin I knew you'd all be really <laughs> yeah Karen I don't think you'd be able to read all of these um but never as well never underestimate it doesn't have to be books could be an article could be a newsletter is there a newsletter that you subscribe to that you find really useful um I subscribe to something called five uh, five things on a Friday uh, by something called James someone called James Watley that's always a really good read and sometimes I'll think oh I haven't had time to read maybe a book for work this week or yeah, that's that's quite a common thing newsletters are quite good I think shorter summaries where you still feel like you can kind of dive into a topic so if you've not discovered newsletters I'd really recommend them Christine Armstrong's weekly vlog is absolutely brilliant if you don't um, I think follow her on LinkedIn is probably the best way to get it if you follow her on LinkedIn every Friday she does a really short video they're really funny and they manage to be very insightful at the same time she does a lot of research into the world of work um so they're really they're really good uh, also a great example of sort of creating kind of personal and meaningful content she's done a great job um and her book mother of all jobs is really good oh katie you like tortoise um i like tortoise too tortoise sense maker tortoise believe in slow journalism so they apparently apparently their podcast is very good my sister told me um my sister listens to the tortoise podcast um was saying how good it is can't remember who she said was on it but someone interesting um so they usually sort of dive a bit deeper cool I knew we would be able to do some curiosity career karma just because of the sorts of community this is uh so that's again another this is a good example of a five minute favor if you read something you could share it with someone else you could think about how can I make this helpful if you're naturally a curious person great place to start that's Julia you're spot on that's exactly who you should listen to Caroline um and I got a screenshot about it and, and saying have you listened to this yet but I have read Invisible Women which again if you've not read that 
um, and you don't need to be a woman to read it. It's just fascinating, like how so many things are like made, even stuff like, um, you know, phones are not made for small hands. And someone with very small hands, I'm like, oh, yeah. So I drop my phone all the time. It is quite anger inducing. You're right. You have to you have to be in um, a very grown up, calm state of mind, I think, to read Invisible Women, especially if you are a woman. <laughs> so let's now do the slightly harder question of what's one thing oops let's try and do that better sorry what is one thing you could give to this community today so to our pod plus community what's like one thing that from all this talk we've done this morning of career karma what you've got to give your experiences your energy maybe just something you're passionate about something you're interested in Let's have a think. Maria did a great example earlier before we even um, started talking a bit about this, where she shared she does some work about women at work going through menopause and already put the offer out there with her profile and said, if, if anyone wants to chat about that, she's very happy to do that. Perfect example. One thing that she can give to this Podpus community. Let's see what other ideas we can come up with. Nina, great one. Experience of moving industry pivots. You've done it twice with a massive squiggle in between. <laughs> I'm just visualizing now this like massive squiggle uh, just coming your way. That's a great one. Loads of people want to change industries. Really good to talk to someone who's done that before. Um, ah, so you're a Gallup uh, strengths coach. Great. Perfect example. Really specific skill. Uh, Katie's got a background in higher education, social mobility talk about schools participation great radically inclusive sounds fascinating um uh what else have we got interesting victoria happy to talk about how we support people who are grieving at work really interesting uh energy international networks great um uh, sarah works in civil service sorry helen Okay, just because someone asked, it was Five Things on a Friday by James Watley. It's a newsletter just because someone asked, uh, if they're lucky, asked. Uh, well, yeah, working in civil service. I'm actually going for a walk and talk with someone today who um, works in the civil service, very, very senior. Um, and her world completely blows my mind. So uh, we're going to go for a walk and she's going to tell me about it. Uh, early career perspective, definitely in the, during the pandemic, uh, especially, sorry, during the pandemic. Great. Program management in a crisis. <laughs> oh, that's really interesting, Claire. Experience of being chair of governors and the trustee of a charity. Amazing. Oh, there's so many. There's so, okay, there's 28 messages. I've not read. I'm going too slow. Um, working as a woman in the Middle East, Emma. Great. Mental fitness and intercepting your saboteurs. A great one. Support mums returning back to work. Managing issues around high growth spurts uh, from Steve there. Uh, Sarah's very helpfully put five things on a Friday link into chat if anyone does want to sign up to that newsletter. Um, it's quite techy, but it's certainly not, I, I, you know, I'm not no expert in technology. Um, how do we save this chat? That is a really good question. I, that was just going through my head at the same we time. We have answered it. It's the three dots, the bottom right of your screen, everyone in chat, you should see three dots. If you click on that, it should tell you how to say it. Thank yeah. you. Uh, so feel free to respond to people when they're saying, oh, I've, I've done that. If this would now be useful for you, we know that Career Karma is all about giving, um, but I do think there is a bit of an opportunity. It's something we don't have the time to do very often is to actually say, okay, well, maybe there are people here who want to connect with each other outside of Pod Plus. Um, and we're always trying to think a bit about how we build this community and where this community lives. Um, and we're still figuring out some of that, like how we keep you all connected sort of outside of us. We're great at bringing you all together once a week. Um, but maybe this is a good opportunity for you to also talk to somebody here to say, oh, well, actually, I'd be really interested to find out more about working in the civil service or in higher education or lots of people talk about industry pivots. Um, Ruth talking about experience of thinking of doing a PhD. Ruth, maybe you and I should chat. I always I imagine I would like to do a PhD. But then I spoke to one person um, who has done one who is an academic. Um, and then it scared me a bit and I was like, oh, maybe, maybe not. <laughs> um, oh, Claire, this is your first experience. 
Oh, well, it's a bit different this week. Sometimes if people who came last week with me, and Helen doesn't know this because she, she wasn't here, I basically made everyone do behavioural science for half an hour <laughs> in quite an intense way. Um, so this feels much more um, relaxed and sort of a bit more like everybody contributing. So, you know, you never quite know what you're going to turn up to on, to a thir- on a Thursday. So I am thinking, Sarah, I'm, I'm saving this chat, like many others, that maybe we could do something on a future pod plus where we create like Sarah and I start at five minutes, but then we break into some like what we what kind of call them skill circles. And this is actually an idea that we we shared on the podcast where we can go. Oh, we'll go through all the things that people have shared and we could maybe get in touch with you to see if you'll be up for sort of running a skill circle for sort of 15 minutes and people could join one of those skill circles. So uh, let the idea percolate with us. But if it's something that people might be up for, that could be quite a nice way of this community learning from each other too. Great. And that was it. That was all I got to share this morning. I'm going to stop sharing my screen and stop, stop trying to sound quite so croaky. <laughs> <clears throat> I promise I literally did have one drink last night. But um, I, we also did. It was one and a half. It was two on WhatsApp. But that's what you said. Is that we started this saying one and a half, and now it's gone down to one. <laughs> well, yeah, it was. It was sort of like one and a half. But you know, how big was the one drink? <laughs> exactly. It wasn't even that big. I don't even drink very much. But I do sound quite croaky this morning. That's. <laughs> So next week, everybody, uh, in fact, straight after this, Sarah and I are recording next week's episode. So because you are in Pod Plus, you get to you get to know what we're doing. We're going to talk about how to bring your values to life in teams. So we haven't done an episode like on focus on value since episode 42. So we've mm. well, done it. Um, and that is a good episode 42 is a good like intro to values. But we really wanted to talk about having sort of a listen to that one, perhaps. How do you take that awareness that you've got and really put it to action within within teams? Like, what are some of the conversations you can have within teams about values? So, um, if that is of interest to you, that will be out obviously on Tuesday, and then we will talk about it next week with you. And Nina, you're right. We do have a Pod Plus uh, LinkedIn group. It's not very active at the moment because we're not basically doing a very good job of running it. Um, but feel free to connect in there as we continue to figure out how we keep everybody connected. Um, it's definitely on our sort of to learn and to think about list. Um, but feel free to always connect with each other kind of outside of this to message each other as we're going through sessions. We just want to sort of bring people together. Um, and we're trying to get a bit better at that as well. But um, the LinkedIn group is there for now. Um, so let's use it if we want to. And if people have got other ideas of things that they think would be better, we're always really open to that too. Yeah, I, don't, I think one thing we probably don't need is another WhatsApp group in all of our lives. So no. <laughs> probably not that. That's probably not the solution. But that just do. sounds like you don't want another WhatsApp group. <laughs> can you imagine it gets so so big uh, but yeah we could probably do we probably could do with a, uh, some kind of community for the lovely pod pluses outside of these sessions anyway right should we leave it there today let's so next week we're doing yeah values as a team um and there should be quite a lot of useful resources that we'll be showing for you to then use back in your organizations as well um and we might be a bit less croaky let's see <laughs> take care between now and then everybody see you all soon bye bye for now. bye, bye.